The Crew 2 closed beta ran from 31st of May to 4th of June 2018, giving its participants a glimpse of the new MMO racer. This video provides an overview of the progression, navigation, performance and compatibility previewed in the beta. Let's begin with progression. The Crew 2 offers a variety of disciplines including street racing, off-road rally, boat racing and plane aerobatics. Let's go over each one, starting with the simplest, street racing. The objective of this discipline is to be the first to cross a number of checkpoints en route to the finish line. What complicates things is that your only guide to navigating the streets is a faint blue outline on your minimap, as was the case in The Crew 1. However, the minimap in The Crew was a lot more efficient with its design, as the road you were driving on was dynamically scaled larger to catch your eye. This made glancing at the map far faster in The Crew, so navigating in The Crew 2 is certainly a step down from the first game. This is offset by the difference in traffic between the two games. The traffic in The Crew was a major nuisance, and crashing into them could lose you a race at the last minute. The streets of The Crew 2 are eerily empty, which may break your immersion, but make for a significantly easier racing experience. The Crew 2 only requires you to finish in the top three, which gives you even more breathing room. Moving on to the second discipline, Rally Raid. It is similar to street racing in that you're chasing checkpoint markers on your screen, except you'll be driving off-road this time. You'll also be racing against the clock, not AI drivers. The third discipline, boat racing, feels like a combination of street racing and off-road rally raids, except you're on water. Like street racing, you'll be racing against opponents, and like rally raids, there is a vast open space for you to maneuver your vehicle. The aerobatics discipline is the most unique of them all, requiring you to perform aerial stunts in an aircraft. Each successful stunt grants you points, and you win the event when your points exceed the target score. Progression in the closed beta was simple. Finish a trial for each discipline to unlock more events in that discipline. Beyond that point, I'll let the game explain the rest. It's simple. Doing things gets you followers. The more followers you have, the more you'll be invited to do cool new things where you can earn even more followers. And bucks. Big bucks, which we can use to buy all the cool stuff we want. A brief word on compatibility. I use a Logitech Driving Force GT and the game automatically configured all the driving functions upon the game's first launch. If you wish, you can go into the options menu and rebind any function to your preference, as I did with the change camera and look back functions to the buttons I was comfortable with. To my surprise, no additional configuration was needed to use the wheel with a plane for aerobatic events. The game automatically set the controls to keys that made sense and relayed that through pop-up hints in the first few events. That being said, I did encounter issues when performing an outside loop. The plane would tilt to the side without me turning the wheel, which I hope is a bug so the developers will fix it before the game's release. That brings us to performance. With a 1080 Ti, the game hovered around 30% to 50% GPU usage at 1080p, with all the settings to their highest. I'd say a GTX 1070 or 1060 could comfortably max this game out of 60 frames per second on 1080p. My second generation i7 did take a beating in urban areas, so you might want to recently release CPU before getting this game. Of course, performance goes hand in hand with visuals, so let's discuss that briefly. I'd say The Crew 2 is a lot more colourful and vibrant than the first game. The lighting system steals the show here, and is at its best on open water. The game also looks fantastic from up in the air. I had no trouble with the draw distances. Indeed, I can't say I ever noticed a single pop in. Water effects are satisfactory, though not as detailed as Assassin's Creed Origins. The textures are on par or better than the first game, though if you're playing the game like you're supposed to, you won't have time to stop and examine them in detail. VRAM usage is well optimised, hovering around 3GB at all times and never once exceeding 3300MB. Even the GTX 970 can max the textures out with its 3.5GB memory. In summary, the Crew 2's PC port is fairly well optimised. That concludes our overview for the Crew 2 closed beta. I was not a fan of the first game, indeed I only started playing it after Ubisoft gave it away for free, but the sequel has me hooked with its varied array of disciplines. There's something here for everybody. The open beta is on the horizon, and even if you hated the first game, I highly recommend trying The Crew 2 when you can. Open betas are free, so what have you got to lose? There will be more The Crew 2 content on this channel, so please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. Our next analysis will explore The Witcher 3 downgrade. Till then, feel free to check out our last analysis, which explores how long For Honor takes to unlock heroes.